Hey everyone, I got my first round of derogatory YouTube comments on my new channel and guess what they're aimed at? Me being a dumb blonde. <laughs> this is a YouTube milestone day. Wow, what you're about to hear today are three stories of epic battles of ballsy business success from a highly judged blonde female rising up from the chauvinistic climate in Detroit through personal power techniques that she used to shock boardrooms full of men and won a successful business in spite of the odds. What did this YouTube hater say anyway? Right here, take a look. Here's his comment, everyone. He commented on not one, but two of my videos. Here's the first one. Quote, like I am going to listen to a blonde woman, LOL. Nope, five plus five equals question mark. Alrighty then. And the second comment on my video about people pleasing and how to stop doing that. This is what he had to say. Hey women, apply this logic in the bedroom. Checkmate. Wow. So to you hater, an oldie but goodie, but wow, the dumb blonde. I forgot about this. How very retro of you. Thank you for bringing this up. YouTube haters are a real thing. However, this goes beyond YouTube, and I am now going to address it by telling you how I have dealt with this very judgment from men throughout my career. Blonde, female, etc. Although it's familiar to me, I assume the dumb blonde attitude had died back in the 80s as we women have proven ourselves. You won't want to miss this all the way to the end for all three stories and my wrap up on my take on this. This video is also the best sales training advice you will ever hear, bar none. So buckle up everyone, haters in tow. To my hater, one more, one more thing. I want to thank you for your very thoughtful comments. Many of you know I embarked on my first dream by founding a technical training company in Detroit at the young age of 26 years old when I was slender and blonde. Oh yeah, still blonde. And if I had a prayer in hell of succeeding, I would need to develop tactics in marketing and in business that would give me balls of steel and to be so bold and daring in order to even compete on the map that in, especially in technology, and you're about to be let in on some of the greatest secrets to boardroom success by a woman for women and for men who are right now afraid or have been afraid in the past to be bold and say what you wished you had the balls to say and what you wish you would have had the nerve to do, but you didn't because you let fear stop you. Make no mistake about it, I was never gonna get the business had I not done what I did. They had made up their mind about me by looking at me when I opened the door and stepped in the room. Lo and behold, in fact, I had two sets of business cards, one of my strategies, so I could cater to the cowards and the wimps versus the men who were secure in themselves, who weren't threatened in themselves by a young woman in business who provided better services at a higher level than the competition. I branded my budding company right off the bat to look bigger than my $10 million competitor at the time, who'd been in business at least a decade that I know of. Another marketing move I had to do in order to win. I set myself up to get invited on the list of Fortune 100 to 500 firms. How I did that is another story for another day. My big competitor's key person and I would meet at Apple, Microsoft, Lotus, Adobe, and other tech firm meetings where we would commiserate. But we both knew we were in fierce competition against one another. One of my favorite stories is one of my walkout stories. It was a sunny summer afternoon. My presentation was at a high rise at a major corporation, Fortune 100 that I was pitching for about a $150,000 contract that today would be worth about 2 million. It was a big deal to me at the time as I had employees and payroll to meet and I needed the business. That's, that was still a significant contract. As my usual flair for that era, I would come into the presentation with my luggable Macintosh Plus, the, the square black and white heavy machine with a nine inch screen and my PowerPoint presentation before there were any projectors even invented yet that could connect to a computer. But I would set it up at the end of the boardroom table and proceed with handouts to accompany the presentation. 
On this particular day, however, there were eight men in the boardroom. And no matter how hard I tried to start my presentation and get their attention, I failed to do so. They were just rude as I tried to get their attention to start. They continued ignoring me, almost deliberately, talking amongst themselves and generally being a-holes. They may have thought that I was the appetizer and the boss was coming soon. I didn't know, and frankly, I didn't care. After a few attempts, I realized something. If this client was this bad at listening, that I couldn't get them to sit down, be quiet through a, a short presentation, how in the heck was I going to get them to do the needs assessments and project development phases with me in order to create a successful program for them? So I did the unthinkable. After standing there, giving them a chance, waiting for them to calm down and pay attention to the presenter, me, I first unplugged the Macintosh from the wall. It went whoosh, and I wound up the cord. I unplugged the keyboard. That sound, click, no one paid attention. I lifted up the Macintosh, put it in the bag, put the keyboard in, put the mouse in, put the cords in and accessories. If any of you were around in this era of this Macintosh, you know that these carrying cases had teeth like jaws. <laughs> they were, this was the loudest zipper teeth that held that bag together in order to carry that luggable Macintosh. It wasn't portable, it was luggable. So after I lifted it inside, got everything in, I took my time with that zipper. Oh, the ring. You put your finger in the ring and it would pull. You all know what I'm talking about. Those of you who've been there, you pull that around. Like... <laughs> it was loud. Mm-hmm. All while not giving a shit. I had the most gratitude that day for those big teeth on that zipper. And I always loved that sound. I threw the Mac over my shoulder, put threw my purse over my other shoulder, and then they all finally suddenly came too. Wow. Remember, I had $150,000 on the line and a lot of mouths to feed back at the ranch. This is what I did next. I looked around the room at each one of them and I simply said this, thank you for your time, gentlemen, but you are not the right client for me or my firm. Oh, but. Here's a business card of my competitor in Livonia. You're more of a fit for them. I only partner with companies who value the highest level of service. And I can see here today, that is not your company. Oh, by the way, after you finish your contract with my competitor, give me a call maybe in a year and we can revisit retraining your employees, which will need to be done because the needs you have will not be met by my competitor but he's the only choice you've got besides my firm now i'm sorry you weren't interested today but when we retrain your people in a year you'll find out the difference between me and them and the price will be double so thank you gentlemen for your time and have a good day i turned around and walked out shut the door walked to my car and I enjoyed every minute of turning down business over being disrespected because of what I look like and for being female instead of male. No man would have been treated with such blatant disregard, not back then and not now. No, there were most definitely jaws that dropped though before I walked out that door and finished my last sentence after I gave them the competitor's business card. It was such great fun. I had, <laughs> I had just given up what was a big contract for me and I had the most fun ever. I'm a very principled person with whom my dad taught me to stand up for herself whenever right and wrong was on the table. I had guts and I still do. You don't let fear rule you. I had standards. The second story I wanna share with you the second way I won business over my male-dominated competition in a male-dominated culture constantly was this. For the people I presented in front of who were not disrespectful. Hello, gentlemen. Thank you for having me here today to present how we can solve your training needs. 
Before we get started, let me ask you a question if I may. Is that okay? Yes? Okay. My question is this. Once you receive all three bids for this upcoming contract, what criteria will you be using to make your final decision? And I would shut up and wait. Look around. Stairs. People looking at each other in confusion. Shoulders would shrug. Hesitancy would be in their voices. Well, well, so I would ease their pain. Well, okay, let me make it easier on you and on me. If your final decision will be based on the lowest price, I won't waste your time or mine bothering to stay and give you my presentation today. And I would pause and say this, because I am the most expensive training company in the Detroit area. And I shut up and I waited and I watched. Oohs, ahs, squirming in the chairs would visibly occur. I loved it, then I would continue. So if your decision will be made on achieving actual results that improve productivity and take away the fears and lack of knowledge that these computers are causing your employees by dropping them on everyone's desk with no knowledge of what to do with them, if you want that problem solved and solved for good, and you are willing to pay the premium price for these results, only then can I afford my time to stay and give you my presentation. So I ask you the same question again. What criteria will you be basing your final decision upon? What do you think happened? In 100% of these cases, of course, they wanted to know what I had to offer. I taught them in one fell swoop that not only would it be ignorant of them to go with the lowest contractual price, but not to go with the most expensive option would be stupid because they would have to ultimately redo the training again months down the line, therefore costing them double the cost. And this, my friends, is my second tactic on how I grew my budding company from $360 to a million dollars in under five years time. Granted, that doesn't look like much money to you today with the way all these kids are making money and the way the world is. But remember, there was no internet, no cell phones, no luxury of getting in the door in these firms the easy way. It was brutal. How many of you have ever done anything like this in your life? Either one of the first two scenarios, knowing that what you say could lose you business. What you say could cost you your job. What you say could lose your relationship. How many of you have actually put your shit on the line for your beliefs and been willing to give up what you really wanted in order to keep with your higher principles? To walk away from that which meant everything to you because of a principle, a standard. That, my friends, is bold. That, my friends, is why the hell I'm sitting here on YouTube. In this third story, I was sitting at a luncheon at a fine restaurant in Southfield, Michigan, with a group of four or five men from one of my large client companies, when all of a sudden, a local television personality, a male, who was very well known at the time to every human in Michigan, there's nobody that didn't know this man, when he walked over to our table, stood next to me, towering over me. As I looked up at him, he said this to me, who do you think you are being here with these men at this table, in this place? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Talk about being a bit shocked from this out of the blue, but I had to maintain composure because I was in front of a group of clients from this firm and they were so great. They were such strong, secure men that they completely respected who I was and they knew my skills and fortitude and strength. And they also knew not to mess with me. So no one needed to come to my rescue and they knew this somehow. So they waited for me to respond out of respect for me. And of course, it took me a minute or a second. It was quick, but I had to pause to think, well, what do you do with that? 
And mind you, I really liked this TV personality and had always admired him and I'd never met him in my life before. So to this effect, I said this. Oh, hello, blank. And I don't want to say his name on, on the air, on record. Please allow me to introduce my clients who would really enjoy meeting you. This is Ed blank. Nice to meet you. This is Jim blank. They shook hands. This is DJ blank. They shook hands. And then the fourth one from blank corporation. Now I'm not going to name any of these because I'm not getting in trouble anywhere. Then I said to him, we are just discussing strategies to train their 700 employees in our next rollout. And I shut up. This is how it's done, my friends. This is personal power. I could have just as easily sunk in my chair out of both surprise and remission at that situation. He did not know me or the business I had with these gentlemen. What if I was the daughter of one of these men? And I am someone's daughter, by the way. I want to ask you to ask yourself, especially to my hater, what bold thing have you ever walked away from based on principle and intelligence and boldness and balls of courage and ethics that meant you were walking away from something major like a lot of money or a great relationship or what the frick ever. So how I got right here where I am today is because I tackled those skills back then which created my nerve and my bold, courageous actions and my abilities to speak up for myself, no matter who you are and what you have to offer my life. So when I teach on this podcast, I'm doing this as an expert on courage. You see, I turned being a blonde female into my greatest and most confusing representation in the business world in which I served. I deliberately confused them I deliberately shook them out of their normal thinking. I did not look the part of someone who would pull the plug out from under a presentation and walk the hell out of the building, leaving lots of money on the table while smiling and handing over my competitor's business card. It was shocking and confusing to them. In other words, it changed their state. They could not figure out what to do with this, and so they hired me. That's how I won business. I became successful for fighting for my rights to be in that boardroom as equally as any man at the time. My tactics were refreshing to them. I was told this. My honesty and upfront nature was not only welcome but rewarded. To put it all on the line and be willing to lose rather than fight to win at all costs through unethical methods. This is what's missing in business even today. I never believed you have to lie and cheat to win. I never believed you have to sleep your way to the top to win. No one gave me a damn thing. How I got here today is just like at age 26, where I would have to develop marketing tactics that were beyond bold with balls of steel to have even a chance to compete and be successful in this climate. Now in my reversed age, ironically, from 26 to 62, all the same stuff is here on YouTube. So it's taken me again a great deal of courage to start this channel, put my face on camera, and own what I know. I already know where I'm heading. I already know what is to come, and I know how to manifest my dreams and my goals and my desires because I've been doing it all my life. What about you? What are you doing? I will be unleashing myself on my channel from now on. I've been holding back a while as I got my feet wet, but no more. I'm speaking my mind and teaching people who are ready to go on to the next level of their lives, their careers, their relationships, their life purposes. I'm going to teach those of you who are ready for higher messages to create the life you actually want, one in which you want to live according to your own soul, rather than settling for crap in this life. If I'm not for you, go ahead and leave. My channel is for men and women who truly need and want both the inspiration and the expertise that I have, both young and old. My courage reserves have been activated and I'm about to teach you all about your own courage and power, so get ready. You know who you are. It takes bravery to look at yourself and your life, doesn't it? 
It's easy to take pot shots at other people. That's just like, really? Whatever. To reinvent yourself time and time again. Like my early videos are Mamby Pamby precursors to the actual power of change, the power of thought, the power of manifestation I'm about to unleash. So if you are ready, then I highly encourage you not to miss an episode. What I've got planned in my next 70 episode videos will and podcasts will help you become more bold and more powerful individual who's in control and in charge of his or her destiny. Guess what? I'm Kate Wilder and I'm 62 and just getting started. This is my Wilder Talk Show, where we're talking about how to go from fear to courage and everything in between. Handled, done, owned, powerful, uncompromising standards, and having the courage to take action and become somebody new. Subscribe with notifications if this is for you, and I have to thank you for watching. All the way to the end on this one, and I welcome comments. You take care, my friends, and the next video will be up in a few days with more plot twists. And thank you, my hater, for spurring me on and getting me back to exactly where I need to be.